Hey, Phil Ebener here with the Photography Masterclass and Video School Online, and today I'm doing a little photo challenge. I'm downtown with my pup Ashby, and I wanted to challenge myself by using a single lens, prime lens, the Nifty 50. I'm using my Canon 70D, and they make these 50 millimeter, really inexpensive lenses for most cameras. You can get this lens for around $100, maybe even cheaper if you get it used. And it's a great lens for beginners who are looking to get a good, low light lens that can shoot with a very shallow depth of field with a very big open aperture. And so I just wanted to take this lens out, see what I can get and show you that you don't have to have the biggest budget to take great photos. So let's go out there and see what I can get. So I'm just out here walking around right now trying to get my first shot. I have, they have this sort of little grove of lemon and citrus trees and we're next to this old train station. So we'll try to get some cool shots of that as well. So first I kind of just got those standard nature shots. The colors of the fruit wasn't that interesting. It was all green still. So I got these two flower shots. They're okay, nothing special. I saw this cool sign. I tried to frame it within the leaves and the branches of the tree, which I thought was a little interesting. And then I moved over and just got a straight on shot. Also interesting with the different textures, the chain link fence. Ashby, my pup, was a good model. Got a little tired of me snapping so many photos of her there but she was a good model crouching down to get more eye level with her and then playing around with fl framing negative space and things like that over on the side there were some cool little artifacts and things from i'm not exactly sure it was but the train stop and i like this really cool gauge looking thing we have the american flag in the background so i tried to frame it up while the flag was blowing and blowing open so you can see the entire flag back there then I moved over to, they have a replicate of the train track right there. And at first I was trying to get an interesting shot looking down the line with a very deep depth of field of F13, but I realized that wasn't really the interesting shot I wanted. So I cranked open my aperture to F3.2 to try to get one of those little pegs in focus. I jumped from one side of the track to the other, and I thought that was a pretty interesting shot. And then I even cranked it up even wider to f 1.8 for this shot looking kind of straight on i think i could have gotten a better angle with it more centered which i'll try to do when i go back so behind me you can see the old train stop and it's a really cool bit of architecture down here the problem with the 50 millimeter lens on a crop sensor body is it's fairly telephoto it's fairly zoomed in and so I really have to step back to get the entire building in the shot. So it's definitely a challenge when you just have one prime lens and you're trying to get different compositions, but it's a good challenge to try to get. So I backed up and got the whole building in a shot and I also went a little bit closer to get, just get the sign at the top uh, to get a couple different angles. But it's just something I wanted to bring up as part of the fun and challenge of using one focal length uh, when you're out shooting. So behind me, you can see this little archway that I think is gonna be really cool to try to frame something within a frame in your image. So I'm gonna take a couple shots, one without really any subject, and then I'm gonna wait around and see if I can get some sort of subject within that frame that's gonna take the photo to the next level. So here are the few shots that I took here. This one, just straight on, nothing really interesting in the background, no real subject. The framing is kind of interesting with that arch, but not, really a great photo. So I moved over to the left and I tried to frame up the store, but it still wasn't that interesting. I waited around until a pedestrian walked by and I snapped a few shots. This was the best one I thought where she was just in the middle of that little V on the bottom, but I didn't get the whole arch in there. And that's just because I was using a 50 millimeter and I was standing in that position at that time and I couldn't zoom out. Then I backed up and I got this shot with the San Dimas Hardware Store sign in the background. And I thought these two shots were the ones that I like the best. This is something that the hardware store might you know, use on their website or something like that. And again, just framing a frame or framing a sign with a frame in your environment is something that you can try to do to make it a little bit more interesting than just capturing the sign itself. Now I'm moving over here back towards the train stop. I was looking for sort of some sort of more interesting shot rather than just the building. You know, those are the kind of shots that have been shot 
time and time again that anybody could get that's just walking by, but I wasn't really able to find anything that was too creative. So next, I'm gonna actually go behind you and I'm wa gonna walk sort of in the alley in the parking lot behind the building. Sometimes I find the coolest textures, maybe some old signs or things like that, that might make a cool photo. All right, let's go. The first thing I noticed was the sign to the restaurant. And I took a close up shot like this and I tried to you know, square it off, make it centered, but it wasn't that interesting. So I started to back up and as I backed up, I started to see that this photo was going to get more and more interesting just with the different colors and textures. I like how that light is placed above the door. This would actually be a really cool photo to see at night exactly what it would look like. So I kept backing up, backing up, and this is kind of a standard shot, but then I tilted up and I got what I think is the most interesting photo of the day, my favorite, just with all the different textures, the lines, the patterns. I really liked how this one came out. As I was doing this, I backed up enough so that this old car can drive by in front of me. We have an old Ford model store and so this car was driving by, he waved, and again, with the 50 millimeter, I was just in one location, but I kept snapping to try to get a closer up shot as he drove by. I think the most interesting things with these shots was when I edited them both in black and white, and then also with the sepia tone. I actually cropped this image in so that you couldn't see any of the newer cars that were over on the left parked on the street. And really, aside from that telephone pole, you wouldn't know if this shot was taken yesterday or many, many years ago. After I was in the back alley, we came around to the front of the store and Rodie's has this really cool old neon sign that needs to be fixed up now, but probably back in the day it looked really, really cool. And it really does have a, a cool kind of look to it. At the bottom it says homemade pies. And so I tried to get a couple different shots, stepping back and getting a wide shot of the entire storefront, then also going in tight to get a more close up of the sign. Then I moved on to the other side of the sign so that the sun was shining on it, and I crouched down behind some plants to give some more foreground elements, which I think is a good technique if you're trying to get a shot, is to put some more depth in it by layering, layering foreground elements, background elements, uh, and so I thought that shot was kind of cool too. What do you say, Ashby? What do you say? Continue? Okay, let's go. So there are a lot of uh, cool sort of antique stores down here, which is pretty neat. Finding that the buildings are really the subjects of the town. And I'm gonna take a shot of this one over here. So I'm just gonna kind of walk and talk, but on that last shot of the Rain Co. building front, it just wasn't that interesting. I tried to put, again, some foreground elements into it to frame the sign. It did kind of have that cool clock out front, but still not one of my favorite shots. It just, it just felt kind of standard. All right, so we're gonna walk behind the buildings that are on the other side of the street downtown, and we'll see if there's anything back here. And then I think Ashby's tired, so we're gonna call it a day. All right, so I'm in the alley now, and I think some other dogs saw Ashby and me, so they they want us to get out of this alley as soon as possible, but I love walking down alleys to see what kinds of textures and things that I can capture, and so my challenge for myself right now is to walk from one end of the alley to the other and to see how many kind of different textures I can get. So this is a great thing to shoot when you don't have a subject or a model and you're just kind of walking around town, so let's see what I can get. All right, so I made it through the alley, got a couple cool textures, and one of the coolest shots of the day, I think, happened at the end of the alley. You never know what you're gonna find in there. Found this old TV, and at first I took a couple shots of it on its side, just how it was, but you couldn't really tell it was a TV, or maybe you could, but this is one of the situations where I actually moved the subject of the, the photo so that you can tell it was more of a TV. It was sitting right side up, and I think it turned into kind of a cool photo. You can see my reflection in one of the shots, try to get more of a close up and then also try to get more of a wide shot. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and take these photos home. I'm sure you've seen some of the edits throughout this video. Anyways, I hope you like this style of video. If you want more content like this, let me know. Shoot me a message, post in the comments down below. If I get a lot of people wanting me to create more videos like this, maybe I'll start a series. Photo Adventures with Phil and Ashby. That could be the new series name. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in another video. Bye.